Because you do so many things, influencer, creative, actress, singer. But what led you down the path to become an actress? Like, what did you see as a little girl that made you want to pursue this as your career? Um, well, actually, it kind of started when I was like six years old. There was a show um, in Miami, or just everywhere. Right. It was called Sábado Gigante. And when I was like three, I saved my mom's life. Oh, wow. <laughs> my mom is diabetic, and she was pregnant, and she would pass out all the time. And I guess like I just knew what the routine was. Right. Hey guys, what's good? Welcome to the Cosign Life. If you're watching this video, that means you co-sign us, and we co-sign you. So here are a couple of ways to support us at Cosign Magazine. Number one, view the description below, click the link, and purchase an issue of Cosign Magazine. It's like this. This one right here, physical. You can purchase this. Number two, you can also support us by purchasing Cosign merch. Hit the link below, and it'll take you to all our past merch items, and we'd love to have your support and see you wear Cosign Magazine. back with another episode of Cosign Conversations, a special edition. This is the Cosign cover shoot. We have an extremely special guest all the way from Miami. We have the talented, the creative, the beautiful Eleli Hernandez. How are you doing today? Thank you. Hey. With that intro, I'm doing amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for I'm doing hands. really good. So we just had a cover shoot. Tell us about it. How you think about it? How you think it went? Amazing. I love the theme. I love the energy in the room. I had so much fun. I had a great time too. Um, I'm glad you came all the way from Miami to Dallas. At Coast Town, we want to introduce you know, uh, other people to our city as well as we also go along to other cities and showcase everything we co-sign in our platform. So what I want to know about you is you do so many things. Influencer, creative, actress, singer. But what led you down the path to become an actress? Like, What did you see as a little girl that made you want to pursue this as your career? Um, well, actually, it kind of started when I was like six years old. There was a show um, in Miami, or just everywhere. Right. It was called Sábado Gigante. And when I was like three, I saved my mom's life. Oh, wow. <laughs> my mom is diabetic, and she was pregnant, and she would pass out all the time. And I guess like I just knew what the routine was. Right. So that day specifically, my dad went to go buy like, um, like a playground for us. And my mom passed out and she grabbed into a chair and it like fell on her stomach. And I called 911 and I like said the whole thing. But like it was so animated right. that they were like shocked. And when they went to go like see, you know, when they went, when they showed up, I was like three, you know, oh, wow. and, and they kind of like, um, try to like entertain me the whole whole way because they noticed like I guess through the radar or something mm -hmm. that I had a pool so they didn't want me to get distracted and go to the pool or whatever so they stayed on the phone with me through the whole time that they were on their way to like you know the ambulance was on the way to get my mom and I guess they just saw a lot of like personality and they did a whole like interview of like oh the child the heron child you know like I was a hero whatever at three years old, at three years old because apparently my mom I would have never called my mom could have like lost the baby so it was like a big deal so later on, um, that same network, Univision, which is a big uh, Spanish network, reached out to my mom and said, you know, have you considered of putting her like in anything theater or anything like in the arts? So my mom didn't really want to put me into it at first, but it was like I almost asked her. Like I used to talk to myself <laughs> all the time and I had like an imaginary friend. So I guess like that's what I guess kind of came like the the love for it you know and just gotcha. I would imitate everyone like okay. my mom and everyone so that's kind of like where the love for acting came and you know the classes kind of like polished that and then I went from there for sure so six year old you started acting mm -hmm. and then when you're 18 you moved to LA to pursue it right yes okay yeah so throughout my life obviously I did cheerleading dancing acting um I, I mean I did everything yeah right. I was like always very involved and when I was 18 I was like okay this is the time for me to like just really pursue it like for real you know right. and I moved to LA and obviously everyone thinks that when you go to LA that's it like you make it you know right. and it's like it wasn't like that at all I was like I got there and I was frustrated I couldn't go to school everyone was like you know I just graduated high school so I'm seeing all my friends like move to different cities and like states and whatever and they're in school and I was frustrated because I couldn't even go to school because like it was too expensive I didn't have my residency in, in LA and I mean already LA in general is expensive um so my mom moved out the first year to kind of settle me in and so I'm not alone 
and I started babysitting and me and my mom are really, like, my mom's really young. So like we would go out and we tell everybody we're sisters just because it would be weird to be like, oh, that's my <laughs> mom, mom, you know? <laughs> so my mom was always really cool. So my mom always wanted to go to like these bougie places and have wine, whatever. And randomly one day we're sitting, whatever, and there was Brandon T. Jackson, um, a comedian yeah. Yeah. and a producer. Um, and like they were like talking, whatever. I had no idea who Brandon T. Jackson was. <laughs> so they're talking, whatever. And I guess they had a meeting and they like, the producer kind of just came and for some reason asked me a question. And he's like, what do you think of this and this and that? And I, like, a it was like question. a, yeah, like a random question. And I was like, I don't know who that is. Like he mentioned <laughs> that. He's like, do you know who Brandon T. Jackson, like pointed at, do you know who Brandon T. Jackson is? And I was like, no, <laughs> and he was right there and I had no idea. And I was like, but then when he mentioned, I was like, oh, I had seen all his movies, but I had no idea, yeah, you know? Right. And in the moment, he mentioned, like, Vine stars. And I automatically was like, yeah, I know who they are, you know? And he's like, this is what's wrong with this generation. They don't, <laughs> they don't watch TV. They don't appreciate this. And I was like, I was like, well, you can't really judge me because I'm, like, I'm very Hispanic. I grew up, yeah. although I grew up in America, like, my family is very Spanish. Yeah. So my mix of things is, is very off. It's, like, all over the place. Because, like, when people ask me in Spanish, like, oh, do you know so-and-so? I was like, ah, I didn't grow up in, in like, Dominican Republic. <laughs> right. But then when they asked me very Americans, I was like, ah, but I didn't really grow up. So it's, like, I have a mix of, like, I have a little bit of both. Nice. So I grew up very, like, not knowing the history of a lot of things because, like, I grew up, like, in both worlds, you know, at home in Spanish and, and at school and with my friends in English. So bottom line is that one thing led to the other. In that moment, I did... Um, I was already six months in to LA yeah. and I was taking like two classes at like at a college and that's when he offered me an internship and he's like oh because I told him what I wanted to do and stuff like that and for me it was like I just wanted to learn so much about like the behind the scenes just everything like for me it's like okay my whole life I said I wanted to be an actress I wanted to be on camera I wanted to be a singer I wanted to do this but I never really took the time to really like learn the business so I was like I want to actually like be behind the scenes and, and see it from a different point of view, you know, and see like how it is. So I worked behind the scenes for about like two years and I got to work with Snoop Dogg, Birdman, wow. Jermaine Dupri, Dame Dash. We did a, uh, they were working on a show called Music Moguls. So that kind of brought me into the music world too because um, the show was like a doc series of, you know, these moguls. So right. I got to travel a lot, get to see how the business kind of works from their, you know, from their perspective. perspective. And a lot of long nights because <laughs> most people in the studio are like late night really late night yeah it's like all night so i guess i get that's where i got like the nocturnal thing like i used to go to sleep super early now it's like i'm up <laughs> at 10 i'm like, like what are we doing you know so i got that experience from there i hosted a show with too short oh, wow. in too short's boot box so i got to interview um ice cube g easy and a lot of people so then okay. it's kind of got me into that um were you and doing he, social media at this time already? Or is in this? that moment's when I started. Okay, when you started. So in that moment, I had been working like at a production company for two years. And at that point, and it be eventually became part of like the development team. Mm -hmm. But at this point, I was like, I want to be on camera now. Like, I want to do this already, yeah. you know? So I had been auditioning here and there and doing extra. Because that's another thing. Like, um, when I stopped going to school for a bit, because I, I did start, but I didn't, keep, I didn't keep going. In the moment, my parents were very strict on that. So my dad cut me off. And oh, I, wow. at that point, I thought, oh... Okay, so my dad thought, which is fine. I, I, I don't, I'm not mad at him for it, but he thought that because he cut me off, that's it, I'm going to go back home. Go back, okay. But for me, I was like, no, like, I'm going to work hard, you find know, like, I'm going to find a way. Right. So I moved to, like, the hood, <laughs> I guess you could say. Mind you, I had never lived, like, you know, my parents always worked hard, so I never really experienced that. But to me, it was like, I don't care. Like, this is my career, this is my life. Like, this is what I want to do, so I don't, I don't care what I have to go through. So I lived in, like, with seven people like it was crazy wow. um but That's it was for you. yeah yeah no and it was i mean not on purpose it was supposed to be right. three of us but like <laughs> it was like they always invited all these people to stay with us so whatever and the influencer thing came about like i kind of already had known them i had met them through like shoots or just i don't know just in la in general like you oh, just man. meet people yeah and they always it was about over a year telling me like, do the skits, do the skits. And I just didn't want to do it at the moment because I was like, no one's going to take me serious as an actress. In the moment, it wasn't like influencers were kind of like, now how YouTubers right. have these mansions and whatever. No, it wasn't like that. It was like, on, it? yeah, it was very early on, like five years ago. So a lot of them at the moment were still, you know, with, through the same struggle that I was going through, right. you know? But for me, I think is that when I started doing the skits, I think it's like, 
what really helped was that I was already working in the industry behind the scenes and built those relationships. And then now I add on the skits and the acting. And then now I have like, then also like without realizing in less than like a month, I had like 50K and then 60 and it oh, just wow. grew very fast. Like it so was starting. have an advantage already being in the industry. A little bit. I think it's because like the first video I did, I remember was with Tonio Skits. He was like the first person that I decided I was going to do a video with. And he didn't even have that many followers in the moment. He had like maybe 100K. Okay. And I knew like the ones that already had like a million or whatever. But I guess I didn't want to do it with those people because at the moment their content was more of like, oh, the hot girl with the big butt and the oh, big. Okay. And I was like, I don't know. I was like, I want to actually act. So Tonio, who's like family, he was like, you know what? how about we create like a character like we bring out like the latin and whatever and in la in the moment there wasn't really that many like La latinas and like whatever so i was like okay this is perfect and i was like i can go off on the spot like <laughs> you just put a camera and like i'll go off so that kind of became like a thing so then everybody that had the big following started calling me king batch le, le pons whatever oh like oh i have a perfect like you need to come i have a perfect role for you whatever so they would always call me and it was like every day like i would do three skits it was like and not on purpose i didn't even plan it it was like they would call me and then i would and i would never say no i would literally overbook so myself yes and it was i was like a, it was like a yes man i would say yes to everything i was like yes i'll be there yeah, mind you la is big so everyone's yeah. everywhere so i would yeah, and traffic is crazy, so I would go from one place to another, and it was just like I was always busy, and it's just kind of like I, on social media, I feel like is when people start seeing you one place, it's you, the other, it's like it starts being like, who is this person? So now right. everyone wants to follow you because they see you everywhere. So it was kind of a little bit of that mixed in with like everyone that I was already meeting okay. on behind the scenes. So that's when like bigger opportunities started popping up, like because everyone from the jump knew that that I wanted to be an actress. Okay. But at the beginning, I kind of finessed and said that I didn't. I wanted to be a producer. <laughs> Only because I was like, it's cliche. Everyone yeah, moves to LA, wants to, be, yeah. wants to be an actress. Right. Wants to... So I was like, OK, I'm going to play it off like I don't want to be an actress. You know, and the people would always be like, but you should <laughs> but you be should. on camera. And I was exactly. like, no, like that's not my thing. And then really, that's exactly what I wanted yeah. to do, you know? Um, and nothing, and just like one thing kind of led to the other. And, and, and it's just like, I think it's just persistence and just being like always Right, you know, right. and I was always like available. Like I also didn't really care. Like a lot of people, I remember I had a friend that moved to, to LA and she was like, oh, should I do this thing? It's, you know, they're not paying me, but they're paying so-and-so this amount. And I'm like, you know, if you really want to do something and you're not known for your talent, you're just known because you hang out with these people, right. then at one point you have to show like, you have to pay your dues. You have to show like your talent, what you do, because if not, people are going to think, oh, that's that girl that I met at some party, you know, because people get caught up in that scene. And it's like, for me, it's like I did a lot of times a lot of free work. Actually, most of the shit that I did was a lot of free work. Eventually, though, those same people were like, you know what? I like the way you work and then got me other exactly and a paid opportunity because then they realized that it wasn't for money that I was doing it's because I really wanted to do it I wanted like for me it was like I appreciate that I'm in this position right now and that I'm, I'm allowed to do this because for me it was like this is my dream like this is what I want to do so it's like I don't really care like of course money's great like obviously we got to pay our stuff and whatever but for me it's like I was working so much like behind the scenes and so many different like little gigs here and there that when the skits or whatever it was, it was like, I'm there. Like, I don't, gotcha. you know, no questions asked. So yeah, that was basically the start of the acting and the okay. skits and the influencer. So two part in. question. One, what would be your favorite skit that you've done back in the day? I watched some of your skits. I'll tell you mine's after. And okay. the second one, which skit do you think um, kind of blew you up or what a credit to your, your growth? So the my favorite skit is the one that I did um, with Lele Pons, and it was like the, the Miss the, Miss Latina, Miss Dominican, okay. and I think that one was my favorite because it was like first of all I was representing my country. That's right. number one. So th that was like something that like, I was like proud of. Um, although I was never I was raised there, but it's yeah. like I feel very Dominican. So I like that skit. It showed my personality a lot. I was able. It was like a, a, a longer sketch too. So it was like I was able to show showcase my my acting my personality and it was like funny and fun and it was very me so that's probably my favorite one and the one that really well the project that blew me up was the caught series okay. that day storm did and then it was like all of too. us it was okay. like king batch uh, janina well all of us it was like the whole group and that for me was random because i wasn't even like friends with them in that time yet like i was like new to the scene and like they had been doing it for a longer time than me you know and for me for them like for me when they asked me to be part of it and kind of be one of the main because i was just a side chick so i was like the yeah, main I girl it. i was like the start the start of the, a classy side chick yeah yeah so that was like the start of the of the thing and that was really cool and i noticed that that's what blew me up when like 
I remember I was on my way. I don't really know where, but I was on go- getting on a plane, and I I was like walking whatever down the aisle, and someone's like, "Oh my God, when does episode nine come out?" And I was like, <laughs> "What?" I was like, what do you mean? You know, and that's when like, I was like, oh, shit, people really watch this. And in DR, like, I was at the mall, and someone screamed my name really. And I was like, oh, wow. oh my God. I was like, that's so cool. I was like, yeah. I'm famous. Um, but, like, it's it's weird. Like, all my cousins, every. I mean, even now, like, it's really weird to me because a lot of my cousins are like, no one will believe me that I'm your, I'm your cousin, whatever. And then it'll be random cousins, like, in here in Dallas or New York or Atlanta. And I was like, damn, people know me, like, everywhere. Because I'm like... Yeah. That's how you they're, know you're famous when cousins start popping out. Yeah. <laughs> no, even, even the cousins that I don't. Actually, now yeah. during Christmas, I met a couple cousins. And they're like, can you please follow me, whatever? And I'm like, yeah, you're my family. <laughs> like, why wouldn't I? But I, I get it. Like, yeah. you know, I, I had never met them. So they know so much about me without me knowing that they know so much about me. You know, gotcha. for me, it's like, I just met them and they're my cousins. You know, so. Gotcha. But. I want your opinion on something. I'm going to tell you my skit real quick, too. So I like the one. Uh, it was really two of them. So one, it was when you were dating somebody. He came in late and you were like. It takes you 44 minutes to get home. With clarity. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> that one was yes. funny. And then one with you at a store when a guy asked for your number. Yes, with Casper. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you know what's you crazy? Were- Those two skits are like everyone would always. I barely had came up with ideas for my own skits because I thought I was like horrible at it. I was like, oh, this is not my thing. Like, I don't right. know. I was like, because I always thought like I'm not funny. So I'm like, whatever. And those two skits are the ones that I like came up with. Like oh, the really? whole. Yeah, yeah. And I like. You know, because the rest that I always proposed was like group effort. You know, like we all yeah. kind of pitched ideas, but those two we were are. my ideas. Yeah. Well, I want your opinion on something um, with you being Dominican, right? So there's this thing in Texas. It's a, it's kind of a controversy with like Hispanic artists. Well, I'm gonna say really Mexican rappers mm-hmm. that they're saying like if you don't speak Spanish, you're not really Mexican. You know what I'm saying? What's your thoughts on that? And I'm gonna ask you that because so I'm I'm from Panama. Okay. So both my parents are from there. They were born. And you don't know there. Spanish. A little, not fluent. I'm not fluent, right? So when I go to Panama every summer, I don't feel Panamanian enough, right? Mm. But in, but at home, I grew up with everything, the music, the culture, the way my yeah. mom cooked. I dance typical. But then I don't feel black enough sometimes because my friends are like, bro, yeah. your mom doesn't listen to this music. She doesn't, she cooks something different. So I'm kind of like in the middle. So when I see like Mexican rappers talking about you're not Mexican because you don't speak Spanish, I'm like, man, it really doesn't matter. But what's your opinion? I mean, in my opinion, I think I, I, identify myself with that because I'm not fully Dominican, but I'm not fully American. So yes. when I'm in situation, like when I was in DR now, they'll say certain things and I'm like, huh? I'm like, <laughs> what does that mean? Cause right. they have like their own slang right, that, right, you know, right. that, that is there. And then when I'm here, sometimes my friends will do some, like, we'll say some slang and I'm like, huh? And I was like, oh, that's how we say it in New York or whatever, this and that. And it's like, I'm not, I'm not nor, that's what I was saying earlier, growing up, there's a lot of things that when they say like, oh, like, my cousins will always like rank on me. They're like, oh, you must live in under a box because how do you not know this and this and that? And I was like, well, it's just, it's weird because I didn't grow up too much of anything. It was like I was a mix of literally yeah. both. So I know just as much of both. Like I, so I don't think, I mean, I guess with the language, it's it's weird because see, in your case, you grew up with the food, the culture, yeah. the music. But for me, it's like when people say that they're Mexican or they're like, uh, you know, from any any country, and then they don't they don't know anything about okay, it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? For me, then it's like you're more American, right, you know, because right. you don't really like you don't eat the fo- food, you don't yeah. listen to the music, you don't really. So at that point, it's like you're more American, you know. Gotcha. But when you're raised, you know, so like kind of like both, because like yeah, outside right. we're American and yeah, inside right, home, sure. you know, we're more Latin. So I think it's just yeah. I don't know. I think we're just mixed. <laughs> like you I still know. get mad at my parents for not teaching me. I can't blame my dad. He was in the army, so he's not really home. But my mom. I got a beef with you, mom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But um, I want to talk to you about transitions now, right? Mm-hmm. So you started as a, as a young actress, then you kind of went into behind the scenes, then you went into social media. Yeah. Um, now it's like you're transitioning into becoming an artist. Yes. All right. How has that transition been for you, and what made you want to make the transition at this point in your career? Well, it's something that I always wanted to do, but it was just finding the right, I guess, timing. I think timing is everything. And for me, like, I don't like forcing anything. I'm like, I like things to flow. And I, and I'm very, when I do something, I'm very passionate about it. Like, I'm like, I want to go all in. So I think it's like for anything that I was doing, because I was at, I was starting from zero, you know, from scratch, is like, I have to focus on one thing and then let things just flow. And I I think that's what it was for me. I was just literally working, working. And then one thing led to the other and one person met here and there. And with the music, I didn't know exactly how I wanted to sound or what I wanted to express or what language I wanted to do in because for me it's like like I said 
I'm in two different, I'm in two worlds, you know? Right. So it's like, now I have to pick and choose. Now, as a Latin American, for me, it was like, I can't do music in English yet. Because then I'll be stuck in like, oh, she's urban or she's this, she's not, you know what I'm saying? I'm, but I'm Latin. Right. So I'm like, so then it's like, oh no, she's trying to be black or she's trying to be, no, I'm, I'm, try, I'm just me, you know? So for me, it's like, how do I keep it authentic to myself? You know, so I was like, I, I'm gonna do Spanish music. Mm -hmm. Now, with the music, when I first started doing it, I didn't even know it was like something I was gonna, it was like timing, I didn't know I was gonna do it now. It was more of like, I was going through a lot emotionally and I think it's like, with great stuff comes bad stuff too. <laughs> You know, and I was going through a lot of loneliness, a lot of like, you know, different things, just a lot of things. Dating and my age is horrible. <laughs> so it's like, I was going through a lot of, of different, of just changes and different things. And I think for me, it was like, music was a way for me to like, start to express myself, like start to write. And it wasn't even, I was writing music. I was actually writing poems and okay. writing monologues and just writing my, my, my feelings, you know? And, a lot of my friends in LA did music as well. And that's when like, I was like, okay, fine, I'm gonna get in the studio. And then got in the studio and then I was like, oh, I like this. You know? And that's when like, I really found like, a, a new passion for it. Cause I, I always wanted to do it, but I was scared. Like, I think it was more of like, acting I was never scared to do. Okay. You know, acting and putting myself out there. I was never scared to do because for me, it was like, it almost came like natural. And I was like, I don't care what people think. Like, I, I, I could be somebody else. That's what it is. Acting is like I can be somebody else. I'm a character. So it's like if somebody didn't like that character, it's fine. I'll do another one. Like, you know, <laughs> right. like it, that didn't work. All right, fine. I'll do this. But with music, that's me. Right. Music, it's my feelings. Music is who I am. Music is what I listen to, what I feel, what I dance. So it's like if people don't like my music, you don't like me. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, so then it's, a, per, it's, more so it's more personal. Right. So now, like if someone, like when people would comment on a skit, I'm like, oh, that, that's supposed to be funny. That's not funny. Whatever. I'm like, oh, whatever. I'll do another one. Maybe the right. other one. That's yeah, not your humor. Like that's that. fine. But when someone says, I don't like your voice, I don't like your, your lyrics, I don't like your song, or mind you, I only have one, but I'm just saying, <laughs> then I'm like. I like the song. Thank you. <laughs> um, when people say that, I'm like, mm, you know? <laughs> I'm like, so then I'm like, okay. But then I realize I'm like, with music, it's tricky because there's so much, so many artists that like, for example, I will play Billie Eilish in the car with my mom and mom's like, what is that, mm -hmm. right? But I appreciate it, right? Because I connect with the music differently. So, but I'm not gonna expect my mom to understand it because she didn't grow up to listen like alternative music. I mean, Spanish music is very like vibrant and right. uplifting and just different, danceable, and you know, it's just a different vibe. And if it's ballads, it's like a whole other, you know, thing. <laughs> yeah. So, so I can't expect, so then I, I realized, I was like, I can't take it personal with the music because people listen to all types of things. And in my case, I'm talking about a specific topic too. I, I love talking, I mean, not that I love talking about it, but it's just my, my expertise right now <laughs> is to talk about like breakups and that feeling and this and that yeah and like just expecting so I can't expect everybody to feel that like what and especially if I'm being so specific like they're not gonna relate if you know what I'm saying so right. in a way I, I at the beginning when I first released a song I won't lie like the first couple weeks I became very like not depressed but it was a weird mood. Kind of anxious, like. Kind of anxious, kind of like confused, like, do I really, like, damn, like, I thought I was prepared for this, and yeah. like, I don't know if I'm prepared for the hate and all this stuff. Because all of a sudden, I came from a world of comedy where people just are expecting to be, you know, to right. make you laugh. Right. Yeah. And so my fans coming from different places in the world, too, that don't probably know the language, don't understand it, whatever, I can't expect them to now be wanting to hear my song if what they wanted to see was a skit or or me being funny or me tripping or whatever. Like, my one of my most viewed videos is me literally falling, like, and I have the biggest scar on my knee because of it, you know? And they got, like, I don't know, 10 million views, and I'm like, for, for that? Like, you know, so long story short is the music has been, like, something that, has made me connect with myself a little bit more too and has made me a lot stronger because I had never received hate. That's another thing. I had never received hate throughout these past couple years. So everything has been, you know, with the acting, no one tells you, oh, unless you really suck, you know, <laughs> someone, you know, the horrible role or whatever. No, it was like always good feedback. Everyone's like, oh, we're, like as fans, they were like, oh, we're proud of you. Like such a fan of your hustle and this right. and that. With the music, it's been a little more tricky, but I don't mind it because I know it's a journey and it's like, a, I mean, it's only the beginning. And you know, the only difference is that when you're starting off from scratch, people don't see the first things you do, right? right? Because nobody knows you, but then you blow up and then everybody sees the past things and everybody likes you, right? Right now, I'm starting from scratch in the music, but I have already an audience. So it's like, 
mm, you're only seeing the beginning. Like right, I'm, so I'm learning, more, you know, I'm, I'm so starting. Yeah. So they're a little harder on me right. and everyone's, you know, like it, it, it's a little harder, but it just has made me like build like more thick skin. And actually it's only made me want to do it even more. I'm like, yeah. Oh, you got, okay, fine. Watch the next one. And if not, <laughs> all right, watch the next, you know? So I'm like, it's fine. Like for me, it's like, I, I want to, I like what I do and I'm very passionate about it that I don't really care. Like there's, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to keep doing what I do until. So, so what would you say is your plan for music? Cause you say you don't want to do English right now, right? And Eventually then, I do though. Okay. And I heard yeah. you, I actually heard you kind of like rap in Spanish and I like the rapping too. Oh, thank you. So yeah, that's actually my favorite. Okay. So yeah. So what's the plan? So we only have one song to go by right now. So where do you yeah. want to see yourself as an artist? I mean, I want to be a performer. I okay. want to do a show. Like that's what I want to do. Like I want to be, you know, right. like I want to do, I want to put on a whole show. I want to okay. dance. I want to, I was used to be a cheerleader. So okay. I want to be thrown in the air. I want to do crazy stuff. Yeah, I have all these ideas. The yes. I want to <laughs> do stuff that like hasn't been done yet. Or if, if it has, I don't know. But, um, I want to do a lot of things. I have a lot of like, I have, the thing is that when I dream, I dream big. Like I don't really As like, yeah, yeah. So when I was in high school, the dreams that I have now, I had in high school, you know, but I never shared it because I was like, no one's gonna believe me because they're too big, you know? Right. Now I'll share it and people can see it, but why? Because I'm already kind of like Making in, in the path, right? For sure. But that's the same dreams I had 10 years ago, you know, or even smaller. So yeah, my, my, I, my vision is very big, but you know, I, I, think it's, I think it's time. I think right now we're in a generation where everyone wants to do everything now and right. I, I, they do anything to kind of like call attention for the moment and no one thinks of longevity. And for me, it's like, I don't mind having to take my time and learn and, you know, do little, you know, little by little. I think it's, it's for me, I think my, my career is going to move in a way that's going to be like little by little. It's going to be like moments of ups and downs and all of a sudden, boom, it's like, I won't even realize like, oh shit, I made it. You know, like that's, that's what I feel. And I think it's better too, because I think depression, anxiety comes from a place where like when you receive too much at once and like, you don't know how to, how to like manage it, you know? And I think for me, like I appreciate the, the timing of how my career has kind of moved because I'm not in a rush. Like I'm not in a rush. I'm like, Thankfully, I'm still young. I was like, I have a life ahead of, of me. And it's not like I'm like, oh, I want to retire by 35. Like, no, like, <laughs> I, I think I want to work as, as long as I can, you know? Like, like I just. love still working. Exactly. And she, and she does it all. Yeah, that's exactly, <laughs> exactly. So, so your career doable. has, like, been on, like, the upward. I see it going upward. Just keep going up, yeah. right? But I want to know, who's, like, the first person who co-signed you as an artist? Like, maybe you heard your voice and was like, okay, I want to help you in this aspect grow as an artist. Yeah, so it was DiCarlo. I don't know if well, he goes by T. I forgot how he what's goes his, by. What's his Instagram? Um, DiCarlo. Actually. Okay. <laughs> but he works with like he works with a lot of like Chris Brown, Jeremiah. Okay. Producer. Yes. Okay, producer. Yeah, and he was actually the first person who's like, you need to get in the studio. He's really close friends with Romeo Miller. Okay. So Romeo Miller, I did a movie with him. I got the. Hook I got the hookup. Two. Yeah. So. Oh. That's how I, and actually, funny thing about Romeo is that I met him the first month I moved to L.A. I was 18, and he was kind of like talking to my roommate or something, who I went to high school with, and randomly, I guess she had told him like, oh, she moved here for acting, this and that, whatever, so he invited me to dinner to like get to know me, and he literally posted a picture with me, and she, and he's like, she's going to be a star one day. Oh, wow. And <laughs> I don't know why I'm getting emotional. Oh, wow. No, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. And this was six years ago? No, like seven. Seven. Yeah. Um, I don't know what I'm getting oh, no. It's okay. We, we've been there. Like, um, it's okay. I, um, <laughs> no, it's, no it's I'm good. Real. I'm good. Sorry. <laughs> oh, no, it's, it's fine. I, um, it is. Yeah. That's what we want. Yeah. Let's yeah. you. Thank you. <laughs> it's fine. It's not journey. being dramatic. I'm no, sorry. it's been a journey. No, it's just been a lot. It's been a yeah. lot of ups and downs. Um, and when he said that, like, I remember I, I told my mom, I called my mom, like, oh, my God, you're never going to believe, like, Romeo. Like, you know, I grew up watching Romeo. Right. And, I mean, everyone, you know. So, for me, it was, like, a big moment for someone like him to say that. And I remember, like, three years ago on my birthday, he calls me, and he's like, happy birthday. I know. I hope you're doing well, whatever. I have a present for you. And I was like, what? <laughs> it's like, I hadn't talked to him in a while, you know, but he had been following me ever since he met me and he had been seeing my journey. And that moment I had like 
maybe 500k or something i don't know i was like already kind of popping on instagram and you know and he knew like that whole group so he's like i have this movie that i'm doing and i have showed everyone like the production everyone like your skits and the way you act and this and that and you know we're considering you for this role to be my partner in this movie or whatever and i was like i was like really yeah. you know and he's like yeah and obviously in the moment i was like of course like right. i'm in you know and he didn't i didn't even have to audition nothing like it was just like oh, wow. the role's yours yeah and i mean i feel like i killed it so <laughs> i was like you know but for me it's like i think i get emotional because it was like damn like in that moment i had nothing going on like i had just moved there i remember i was babysitting like okay. three kids and like you know and i was 18 and when and he said that and then like Four or five years later, I did a whole movie with him, and then you know, and and my career literally, like you said, has been, uh, has been going up. Obviously, with his bumps in the roads, right. and like obviously with a lot of hustle and a lot of work and sleepless nights, <laughs> nights. But but it's been it's been a good journey. Like I can't really complain. Like I was like, I'm very I I'm very religious, and like I believe in God, and I feel like God has put the right people in my yeah. path to kind of like add like a little bit you know to the what i've been already like working on so i you know i'm grateful and then um jesse terrero which is my manager he like when he met me i had been wanting to work with him for forever because like he's dominican number one and he's like one of the most known like and respected directors so i remember when i found out about him i was like i need to meet this person like i need to i don't know how i'm gonna be him but i remember i went to the, like a romeo santos concert and i remember he yeah. was there I was, I don't know where, but I was like, there's no way I'm gonna get all the way down there. Didn't, yeah. didn't happen. But there was like so many events that I was like, I need to be, I mean, and um, Tonio Skits, the guy that I, like got me into the skits, he actually had met him. Okay. And he was like, oh, I'm gonna introduce you, whatever. Somehow, I don't know if, I think Jesse started following me and started seeing my skits. And then um, there was like this like event or whatever, and my friend invited me, and that's when I officially like met him. And then I started auditioning for like some of his projects and one thing, but when the Nikki Jam thing landed, my mom actually got me the audition. Oh, okay. And I flew in, I thought it was in LA, and I flew in the next day to, like, literally, my mom tells me, and I bought a flight that night, and right. I was like, I'm out, I'm going. So I flew to Miami, I did the audition. When I got there, it was to be his mom in the show, okay. his young mom. Right. But mind you, in that moment, I was 23, so there's no <laughs> way I could be his mom, like, right. unless she was super young. So I'm looking and I'm like, everybody here looks like my mom. So I was like, mm, this is not for me. I was like, I'm not gonna get it. But so I guess because of that, I just went in there and I, I was just like free. myself. Like, yeah. yeah, I didn't really care. I was like, not nervous at all. I was just like, whatever. And it was like the first audition where like, we had to like pretend like there was like a kitchen and this and like, it was weird. It was a different audition. And I was like, okay, cool. I did it. Then like a month later, I got a call and Jesse's like, oh, we're considering you for the sister role. And I had no idea that what he was talking about. Cause I was like, right. I had no idea it was his project. So I was like, Huh? I was like, <laughs> what's this girl? And then that's when like, you know, that whole thing happened. And I remember he had asked me like, oh, can like, can he put like, put him in uh, contact with my team? And I was like, I am my team. <laughs> I was like, I don't, I don't have a team. I was like, I have no manager. He's like, so you don't have, I was like, no, I am my team. So I used to pretend I had a manager and I was like, my client Lily Hernandez <laughs> would like to work with this brand, whatever, whatever. And that's how I would get my brand deals and negotiate it. But it was always <laughs> me. Always yeah. So. That's smart. So that's when like the whole management came about and oh wow yeah that's amazing. So let me ask you this: working on that project, right? Um, you know, Nicki Jam's a huge star, a huge talent. What did you take away from that experience and apply it to your own uh, career? Like, what did you learn from even being on set, being around him, or even like from him personally? What did you learn from that experience? Well, I mean, just from the story itself, like yeah. his story is crazy. Sure and for me, it, it was like you know what, everyone when people don't make it they always put excuses and whatever and i realized that in this career in this type of career or anything you do really it's just persistence and always like just doesn't matter like it doesn't matter what you go through it doesn't matter what what life puts you through you could go to jail you could anything i mean literally anything and you could still get back on your feet it doesn't matter how many like times you fall like you can still get back time. yeah get back up so i feel like that just made me want to that actually was what made me want to get in the music and actually do it. I remember I was I was spending a lot of time with um, Dalkiel, which was the one that played Nicky Jam. And he's more of an artist. He's He actually had never acted in his life. That was his first gig. Oh, wow. And I mean, he took on a big role, you know? Yeah. And I remember he told me, he's like, you just have to do it. Like, just do it, this and that. And you know, and honestly, just being around Nicky Jam and being around a lot of, you know, the people that were part of the project, it was just like, for me, it was like, 
there's no limit to like what we can do, you know? And for me, it's like, I had never imagined, especially in that moment, I had told my mom three years before that gig that I, the weirdest thing is every time I say something, it come, like it happens, I don't know. Because I told my mom, I was like, it was, it was 2016, I think it was, I don't know. But I told my mom, I was like, one day I want to work with this guy. And it was Nicky Jam. He had, he had done like a lot of like funny like videos on Instagram. It wasn't really skits, it's just him being funny, you know? Right. And I don't know how I was gonna work with him. I was just, I was like, I wanna work with him one day, right. you know? And then sure enough, I was his sister. Like, I was like, what? Like, you know, and, <laughs> and the moment I met him, it was like, you know, like super dope, you know, whatever. And now every time I see him, he's like, my sister. And I'm like, yo, that's dope. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, you yeah. know, so it's cool. I was like, I had never, I would never imagine that was gonna happen like that, you know? So that, what I took from that for myself is like, just keep going. Like, it doesn't matter how many times things are gonna get tough or how many times, you know, I think in, in a lot of this, well, just in general, I mean, we have our ups and downs. I think in this is like, the hardest part is maintaining yourself, you know? And for me, that's why like, I do so much. That's why I'm always involved and I always like wanna do everything. Cause for me, it's like, I don't, a day at home, uh, like not doing anything for me is like a, a sad day. <laughs> like, I wanna be active. I wanna be doing stuff. Like, you know, I just, I, that's what I enjoy. You know, I, I like being creative. I like my mind just goes everywhere. Like I hear a song and I'm like, oh wow, I picture yeah. this scene, like imagine like this. And like, I don't know, like I, I, I dream a lot and like, I, I don't know, I just, this is what I like, so. Gotcha. So now you have an amazing team behind you. So yeah. what would you say is next for you in your career? Like what's the next thing for you that you work on? Yeah, right well right now it's just music for me right now, okay. yeah. Fully focused on Fully music. focused on music. Um, obviously acting, if it comes along, you know, obviously I'm gonna right. take on my opportunity, but mostly right now it's just the music, you know, I think, um, like I said earlier, whatever it is that I do, I have to go full on right. so I can be able to, one, be taken serious, and two, you know, just figure out, you know, that, that image, the, the, the sound, the, the message I want to get across. Because that's, that's another thing, too. Like, I don't want to just be an artist and it's like, oh, feel good, look good music. I wanted right. to actually have a message behind it because for me it's like, I've inspired already a lot of young girls or, or young people or just people in general. So I want to be able to like, whatever it is I do, keep doing that, you know, like being able to inspire people to do whatever it is they want to do or, or I'd give advice. <laughs> I was like, I always said, I was like, if I would have never been in the t entertainment, I would have been like, like a life coach, motivational speaker. Motivational speaker. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. I really like like motivating people. I like seeing people like do good. I like seeing people like succeed, and okay. and that just gives me like a good, you know, like all my friends always ask me for advice, and I'm just like, you should do this, and honestly, it usually works for them. So I'm like, I like that. So for me, it's like as a artist, as a actress, as a public figure, I want to be able to be that person that people are like, you know what, she went through this, this and that, but look, she's still, you know what I'm saying? I want to be able to motivate people to do their thing. And I think that's for me, like my, my goal in, in my career, you know, to be able to, people can live through me and want to do it, you yes. know, okay. just whatever it is. So the full circle mode to bring us all together for this interview, Yes. leave our audience with some motivation. Motivation by Lily. Tell us one thing. So our audience are aspiring entrepreneurs, creatives they want to be like you they want to have their hands and everything so what yeah. is one gym you would tell them i'll give you mine i tell people all the okay. time discipline equals freedom i have it in my law Ooh. i have it written down in my phone so freedom. if you remain disciplined i don't have a quote yet okay well to come up with <laughs> yeah do your own quote but um yeah just leave with some type of motivation um you spread too much knowledge i don't know <laughs> <laughs> i'm like i'm frozen um persistence Persistence is key. I don't know. I think persistence is is what's what's kept me relevant and <laughs> and what keeps me going. You right. know, it's just like persistence in whatever you want because when you're persistent, people like it's like okay, put it this way. If right now I have a cousin, a, a family member, a friend, or anything that comes to me and says, "Oh, I want to do what you're doing," for me, what I'm gonna look at is, do you want to do it because I'm doing it? You like the lifestyle I'm living, or right. you want to just or are you really putting the, like for me, I wanna help you if I see that you're putting the work right. in because I only know all this shit that I had to go through to even get a little bit of what I'm doing, you know? Um, so for me, it's like no one made it easy for me. Not that anybody made it difficult either, but it's like people helped with what I was already doing. It's like, in, in uh, I don't know the, the verbs or whatever in the <laughs> Bible, but I know that, you know, um, so at church, <laughs> you know, it's, it's like, God won't come and hand it to you. Like right. you have to put in work and then he like aligns gotcha. everything, you know? So I think that's kind of like the same. Like I think people 
value people that work hard because nobody wants to feel like you're wasting their time. And for me, I especially don't want to waste anybody's time. So I think that's what it is. It's just working hard towards your thing and just watch how everything just aligns. Right. So basically, so I don't know. I don't know what the what the <laughs> overall message was, but I think it's just persistence and just persistence. work hard and just watch how everything just aligns. Persistence is key, and God helps those who help themselves. Exactly. Yes. So we're gonna leave it at. Yep. Thank y'all for tuning in to another episode of Cosign Conversations with the amazing Lely Hernandez. And look out for issue 28 of her on the cover. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hey guys, what's good? Thanks for supporting Cosign Magazine by watching this video. If you really enjoyed this content, please subscribe, like, comment, and share.